Okay, so here we go. This is uh, Newton's second law. Uh, I'm trying something different here. What I'm doing now is using the team board to uh, do the problems, and hopefully this will turn out a little bit better. So uh, here's the first one. Ethan is dragging a bag of grass from the garage to the street on the evening before garage uh, garbage pickup day. The diagram at the right shows a free body diagram that, uh, and it uses arrows to represent the forces acting upon the bag. Each force is labeled according to the type. The magnitude of the force is represented by the size of the arrow. Use a free body, use this free body diagram to determine the net force acting upon the bag. The values are shown. So let's take a look here at uh, what you've got. This is, let's see here, let me get the good, this is a good color. So what you've got, you got the normal force here. You've got the gravitational force there. These two are going to be equal to each other as indicated right here. It's indicated that those two are going to be equal to each other. So we have an applied force. This is Ethan and he's applying the force in uh, an easterly direction or positive x or whatever directions you want to assign that and friction is opposing that force. Friction will also uh, always oppose that force. And by the way, friction is an electromagnetic force. It's an electromagnetic force. Remember the four forces of nature. Friction is not one of them. Friction is an electromagnetic force. And so the values here are the applied force is 40.2 newtons. The frictional force is 5.7. So remember that Newton's second law says that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So what we're looking for here is the net force. We want to determine the net force. So we want to find out what that value is. We're going to add up all the forces. Well, we're not interested in the, uh, the up-down forces because those are going to be zero. We'll determine later on how we uh, deal with the up-down forces, but for right now we're just going to leave those alone. And we've got a, uh, the, the forces, the sum of the forces is it, are going to be equal to the horizontal forces, which is the applied force plus the frictional force, F-R-I-C-T-I-O-N, okay? And those are in opposite directions. So we'll take and do the sum of the forces. In this case, is 40.2 newtons for the applied force plus a 5.7 newton, but it's also applied in the opposite direction. So we'll subtract that, 5.7 newtons. And uh, so 40.2 minus 5.7 is, uh, I don't know, what is that? 0 0.5, 35.5. So the net force here, and I'll put this over here. The net force is equal to 35.5. And it is a positive value, and so the net force is going to be moving in that direction and causing the motion to move uh, to uh, be in that direction, which is the acceleration. Okay, so uh, that's problem number one. Okay, here's problem number two, or the second problem, second example problem. Sophia, whose mass is 52 kilograms, experienced a net force of 1,800 newtons at the bottom of a roller coaster to loop during her school's physics field trip, hmm, interesting, to the local amusement park, uh, determine Sophia's acceleration at this point or at this location. So let's take a look. Let's uh, kind of see what our, our picture would maybe look like. So she's coming down here like this. She does a little loop-de-loop. -loop. She comes along there and off she goes. So she's probably right here. Let's make her a different color. Let's make her right there. So she's probably right there. And what she's got here is a net force that is going to be directed downward uh, at the bottom of the roller coaster. The, the, the direction of this particular case doesn't really matter, but 
if you if you look at this and as she's moving along here as she's moving along uh, just just by a little bit of, of uh, physics um, work as we come along as she's coming down it's going to get her uh, um, her weight is going to be equal up here at the top we've got some some physics to do up there up here at the top but don't worry about that as she's coming down like this now she has all of the weight of herself part of the 52 kilograms plus the force that's being exerted because of the circular motion uh, that she's going through all right so we're not going to worry about that right now. That's not the focus of this problem. The focus of this problem is to determine, using Newton's second law, what the acceleration is at this point. So um, let's draw our free body diagram. And uh, we'll choose, let's see, be consistent here with her. Uh, there is Sophia. And the net force, the net force is going to be down here at 18 hundred newtons, eighteen hundred newtons, and uh, she has a mass of 52, uh, 52 kilograms. Okay, so there is an acceleration. This is an unbalanced force. It's unbalanced. So there is going to be a uh, uh, an acceleration. So using Newton's second law, force, sum of the forces, the net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And uh, then the acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces divided by the mass. Acceleration is equal to our net force, the sum of the forces of 1800 Newtons. 1800 Newtons. Divided by the mass of Sophia, of 52 kilograms. And so if we take our um, calculator here, let's see, let me get my calculator. Should have brought that over. Although, please remember one thing I don't do calculations, but in this particular case, I guess I have to. 1800 divided by 52 gives us 34.6. So looking at significant figures, we've got two here, we've got two there, so 34.6 is going to be 35. So the acceleration is 35 meters per second squared. Okay. Now, what does that mean as she's coming around here like this? She's going to feel heavier. She's going to feel three and a half times heavier um, than she normally would. And so uh, to, to kind of get that, that's not the point of this particular problem, but to extend this a little bit, uh, what is her G's? What G's does she feel where one G is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared? Uh, to determine the number of G's that she feels, we'll just take 35 meters per second squared and divide it by 9.8 meters per second squared for each G, and when we do that, we end up with uh, 3.5, like I said. So she'll feel 3.5 times heavier, okay? So again, that was not the question that was asking. We're looking for the acceleration, but that's just a little bit of an extension. Okay, so our next problem, the top thrill dragster starter or strata coaster, whatever that is, at Cedar Point Amusement Park in Ohio uses a hydraulic launching system to accelerate riders from zero to 54 meters per second in uh, 3.8 seconds before climbing a uh, completely vertical 420 foot hill. Determine the net force required to accelerate the, uh, to s accelerate a and 86 kilogram man. Okay, well, let's go ahead and draw our diagram here. And let's see, so we've got our st uh, strata coaster. Uh, we don't want red, we want blue because that's going to be the tracks. Okay, so there's our uh, track, and here's our strata coaster. I don't know, it looks kind of something like this. If you've ever seen it, it kind of looks like that. And it's going to have some net force, what we're trying to find here is the net force. 
So we'll do that and label this the net force. You can label the net force as summation of the force or you can label it as the net force. Either way is correct and both are acceptable. Uh, it's got little wheels, got little wheels here. And so it's going to accelerate from zero. It's going to accelerate from zero meters per second to 54 meters per second in a time of 3.8 seconds. And we've got a little guy here uh, who's 86, uh, let's see, let's put him orange. So we've got a little guy in here and he's uh, 86 uh, kilograms. So I'll put 86 kilograms, okay? So we're looking for the force. So the equation that we need to look at here is the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times acceleration. That's what I'm looking for. Well, I need to find my acceleration, okay? Let's first of all draw a free body diagram. We want to draw a free body diagram. So I'm going to come over here and this is what my free body diagram would look like. It's not accelerating up and down. It's not accelerating up and down. It's accelerate, accelerating side to side. So the net force of my up down, the weight and the normal force are equal to each other. So I'm gonna put my weight here. Here is mg and I'll label that as mg. And I've got a normal force that is going to be equal and opposite. It's going to go up. I'm going to label that my normal force, F subscript N. Okay? So that's my up down. So now my side to side. Uh, I'm going to have some applied force. And I'll do that as brown. Some applied force here. And uh, since I don't know what my resistance force that is, I'm not going to worry about that. We'll do that a little bit later. So this is my net force. Okay? Now please notice, uh oh, I <laughs> just dropped my pen. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, ah, I got it. It's a long way down there, you know that? So my net, <laughs> my net force is unbalanced, and so there's going to be an acceleration. Okay, so there's going to be an acceleration. I'll write that here. Acceleration. Acceleration due to unbalanced force. Unbalanced force. And that's important. Okay? So there's our free body diagram. And I'll label this as my FBD. How about that? So we need to find out what the acceleration is. Guess what? I have an initial velocity, I've got a final velocity, I have a time, I need to find my acceleration. Five columns, two rows, let's do that. Five columns and two rows, here we go. So there's one column, there is two columns, there is three columns, there is four columns, and off we go. So. Uh, Let's see, uh, the, ex uh, the displacement, time, the initial velocity, the final velocity, the acceleration. Time is 3.8 seconds. Initial velocity is zero. Final velocity is 54 meters per second. And the time, or the acceleration, is what we're looking for. So here's our equation then. Displacement, of course, doesn't play a role. The equation is going to be acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time. The initial velocity is zero, so get rid of it. Acceleration is equal to the final velocity divided by the time. Acceleration is equal to 54 meters per second divided by 3.8 seconds. 
And so another calculation. I don't like doing calculations. 14.2 meters per second squared. So the, I'm running out of room on the bottom there. So acceleration is equal to 14.2 meters per second squared. That's good. That's my acceleration. So now I can use that and put that into the acceleration here. And I've got my mass. My mass is right there. Voila, I can get the net force. So I'll come along here. The net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. The net force is equal to uh, 86 kilograms times 14.2 meters per second squared. And so then the, the net force acting on this is going to be 86 times 14.2. And we end up with 1221. 1221, that's uh, with simply two significant figures, will be 1,200 1, kilograms times a meter per second squared. That is a newton. And you should know that because that's the unit of force. And so there is our net force. Voila. No problem in determining the acceleration. You got that done. No problem in drawing your free body diagram. You got that done. No problem in determining the net force. You got that done. Nice job. Okay, here we go. Last problem, uh, last sample problem for you to take a look at. Uh, Captain John Stapp of the United States Air Force tested the human limits of acceleration by riding on a rocket sled of his own design. His rocket sled, known as the G-Wiz, had a mass of about 82 kilograms. Uh, what net force would be required to accelerate the G-Wiz and, and the 82 kilogram stap at 450 meters per second squared. Um, you remember the video of this when we were talking about acceleration when we were uh, a little bit earlier in kinematics. So let's draw now, let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram. We're going to dispense with the situational diagram. We're going to draw now just the free body diagram. So we'll start off with our little John Stapp. Here's his little dot, if you will. And we've got mg acting down. So go ahead and label mg. And we also have the normal force acting up. And so those two forces are going to balance out. Since there's going to be an acceleration, we know there's an acceleration because it says it accelerates. So we're going to have an unbalanced force. Uh, go ahead and draw just your unbalanced force on there. And it'll look something similar to this. There you go. And so this would be then the, uh, the net force. You can write that as the net force. Remember, you can write this as net force, or you can write it as the summation of the forces. All of that is still, those are still correct, still acceptable. I'll change from one to the other so that you kind of get comfortable with, with seeing that. So, uh, this is, this turned out to be a fairly, fairly straightforward problem, which would be, I mean, I don't know where this came from. Uh, I don't even know why I'm doing this one because it is so straightforward. But out of the kindness of my heart, I think I'll go ahead and complete this. Uh, the equation that we're going to use, obviously, is going to be Newton's second law. I'm going to go orange this time. Newton's second law says that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times acceleration. Well, we've got a mass of 82 kilograms for John Stapp. Where is he? He's right here. And the G Wiz has a mass of about 82 kilograms, or in fact, 82 kilograms. Or it says about, doesn't it? Okay. So 82 and 82 is 164. And so this now just turns into a very straightforward, simple arithmetic problem. Uh, 164 kilograms times the acceleration of 
450 meters per second per second or meters per second squared and so 164 times 450 it's pretty high force there 73,800 newtons so the net force who the net force is 73,000 800 newtons and looking at our significant figures uh, we'll just say 74,000 newtons so the correct answer to the proper number of significant figures here is going to be 74,000 newtons or 7.4 times 10 to the 4 newtons and there you go all right so this should get you on your way to solving these problems and uh, looking at uh, Newton's second law. We'll, we'll get into some other things in the coming days, but uh, this should get you started.